this for real or not? Hi guys, today we're going back a few years into the past. About nine years ago, wasn't it? About that, this week we're reviewing Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix, which is the HD remaster of what gameplay? Well, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix contains Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which is a remaster of the first game, uh, Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, and Kingdom Hearts 358 and a half days. All in beautiful 720p high definition we should probably have. Exactly. The games look great now, it has been remastered onto the current gen console, so where do we start? Well, let's briefly describe each game and then we'll comment on them afterwards. That sounds like a good idea to be honest. First we'll start off with um, the Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Uh, the, story, uh, the game story focuses on three characters in particular. It is Sora, Kairi and Riku, which are childhood friends whom live on an island. Um, all of them dream to leave the island and explore other worlds though they are about to get more than they bargained for. After a strange set of events, the three of them are separated, with Sora waking up in a strange town known as Reverse Town. Whilst here, he learns he is the master of the Keyblade, allowing him to use the Keyblade to fight enemies known as the Heartless. Why are the Heartless attacking? I don't think we want to go that deep into the story. But what about the bit No, don't Sora? think about spawning. As you go through the game, you'll, you'll meet childhood heroes from the Disney universe, such as Donald Duck, Goofy, Mickey Mouse, and a whole lot more. Don't forget though, the game also has characters from the Final Fantasy universe. Up next is Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories. After playing this remaster, you wouldn't think it's originally a Game Boy Advance factor, would you, Greg? You really wouldn't. Chain of Memories continues directly after the first Kingdom of Hearts game. Still playing as Sora, you will team up with the gang of Donald and Goofy once again. Lord Maluxa? Maluxia. Maluxia has a castle by the name of um, Castle Oblivion. The player is told that the castle causes vi visitors to lose their memories as they step into the castle. As the player explores the castle, the rooms represent a memory of a previous area that Zora has visited from the first game. The one thing that made this game different to the first was its interesting card-based gameplay. All items and moves required you to use a card and each would require a card to access another world. Well that leaves Kingdom of Hearts 358 days and a half. This isn't actually a playable game on the disc, but a theatrical version of the Nintendo DS game. You were able to watch every cutscene with text in between areas to help you explain the story so you understand what's going on. It was great to have it edited all together into like one big film. The story of 358 and a half days is based around the character named Roxas. Continuing straight off the rechain of memories, Roxas is a member of the organisation who can wield the all-powerful Keyblade. The story follows the characters Roxas, Zeon and Axel and is a great story which all ends up wrapping up just before Kingdom Hearts 2. So, with each of the games summed up in a sense, let's give our thoughts out on each one individually. What do you think of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Nathan? I thought Kingdom Hearts Final Mix was a great game. I've never played Kingdom Hearts in my life really at all, to be honest. And the game definitely didn't let me down one bit, because everyone used to hype this game up. Visiting some of my favourite childhood characters' worlds was fun and made the game even more enjoyable. It had a great amount of Disney characters, having Donald and Goofy with you as like allies throughout pretty much the whole game. Though to be honest, Donald could just get lost. He seemed to die quite a lot in combat. Though talking of combat, the combat works really well, but this is one area of the game where you can see it's really aged. The game merely involves mashing buttons to attack and most of the time you have to jump to kill bosses which was a pain in the ass. Yeah, I noticed that. I've never had to jump as many times to kill a boss as I did in this game. But then again, it's not too bad. Okay, so thoughts on Kingdom of Hearts uh, Rechain of Memories. I thought it was an interesting concept to be honest. It l it took a while to get used to um, with the whole card battle system and especially reloading your deck. Looking at it though, it does make you have to think about combat instead of mashing buttons so it adds a bit more to it. The main problem I did find with this though is that it was obviously a Game Boy Advance game but it made it very linear and it was not the same as Kingdom Hearts 1 in that sense. Kingdom Hearts 358 and a half days was also a great addition to the disc and being able to watch it as a film was great as it allowed you to follow the whole story up until the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2. Graphics is the big thing about this game that has actually improved in the originals, so is the HD remaster actually worth purchasing if you played the games previously? Yes! I wasn't actually asking you, but what we have to say why? The game looks great and looks as if it's only just been released in the past year. The remaster of Chains of Memories was the greatest graphical change and is stunning how great it looks compared to its GBA counterpart. So overall each game looks great in high definition and is definitely worth checking out for the second time. Music was also brilliant, everything from the Traverse Town theme to the boss battle. I don't think I can get bored listening to the game's music. Finally, gameplay. Each game plays out differently, though each essentially is the same as its original release. The main problem I had about this being a remaster, though, is the fact that the game still feels old. Jumping and camera with a big box with the camera jamming when you try to turn it. 
and do not even get me started on that Tarzan jumping section. So let's sum it up. It looks great in HD. Yep, the music is great. All the games have a great story and makes us want to play Kingdom Hearts 2. So negative then? Uh, jumping was a bit awkward. You can say that again, like, damn Tarzan section. The camera is also a bit awkward at times. Jumping was a bit awkward. You just said the thing. Yeah, you said I can say it again. <laughs> Other than that, I can't think of any faults whatsoever. It honestly remaster of some great games. Overall, this game deserves a 9 out of 10. The first problems we found are minor and don't really run the experience have. If you're a fan of the Kingdom Heart games, you would want to replay the games again. Uh, if not, you'll definitely have to experience these games before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. You will indeed, though you have enough time to play these games as Kingdom Hearts 3 has been delayed. Thanks for watching guys, uh, what are your thoughts on the Kingdom Hearts uh, 1.5 Remix? Uh, leave your comments down below and we'll get back to you. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you for our next review. What's our next review? Does that mean we haven't actually Yeah maybe, uh, let's go.